Okay, in this video we're going to show you what NetGuard looks like on a Mac. So it'll just be a very quick run through. So the first thing you do is once you double click on your icon, and I've already done this here, and it's communications opened up, this window will open up here, this message window will open up to let you know that communications is established between the USB port on your Mac and the PowerShield UPS uh, that it's connected to on a USB cable. In this case, it's a Defender 1200. So, you see communications is established here, as indicated by that those two words. And down the bottom here, you see your little bar graph icon continuously scrolling upwards. Uh, and that's confirmed by this communication window. So the first thing you go and do is go and open the monitor. So let's go and do that. All right. And in fact, we'll go to here and go to full screen and you can see the opening graphic on NetGuard whenever you start NetGuard is this PowerFlow window which just shows you PowerFlow through this Light Interactive Defender as indicated. Okay so we can go and do something interesting like we can log in as an administrator so let's log in and type in the administrator password admin is Trey Tor and we can log in. Then we can go and do something interesting. I can go to control mode, do real-time control, and we can do a 10-second battery test on a Defend PowerShield Defender 1200 UPS. So I'll press start and say, do I want to start it? Yes. And if you could hear that click, you'll hear it again as it's doing the battery test. There it goes, goes click again. So we know the battery test is complete. And we can go and check how we went in that battery test by going back to history. So we go and look at history, go and look at event statistics, go look at a battery event. So we click on here, and you can see I've done a battery test, commence or start, and a battery test complete, and all was good. So we can go back to that. Okay, that's one thing we can do. Another thing we can do is if you want to know how to set up emails for event records, uh, incidentally, if you're not sure what you're actually connected with, you can always just click on this little icon here and it will actually tell you what it is. So in this case, it's a line interactive device, single phase, 240 volts, and some other paraphernalia there. Um, we can go and look at um, how to set up emails. So you come down to the email section here. And basically, it just works on the SMTP server settings. So you set up your uh, server settings for that. In this case, it's just a default from factory is this particular one, but you'll have your own particular uh, ISP SMTP server setting, as well as your own particular email address, your username. And it's a good idea to tick this or leave it ticked as it is in the default setting for SMTP authentication and enter your password and then you can run a test in which case it will send a test email to a recipient email which you must have obviously set up over here. So that's basically all you need to know for the email section. Now if you want to know what actually can trigger an email, what kind of event will trigger an email, well you go down to the event actions window and you can set up various things. For instance I always like to go down to an AC failure and I click on AC failure and if I have an AC failure, I want this recipient email to receive a notification email to say that I've lost power from the utility company. All right. Uh, and that's pretty well all it is. And then obviously, because I'm ticked on that, you can see that event is ticked. But if I go and look at something else, like for instance, say AC recovery, well, at the moment, it's not going to do anything unless I go over here and click on this. All right. Now, incidentally, you must press apply, otherwise it won't record it, because if I go back to this guy, yes, you see it's not, a, it's not recorded, so what you've got to do, is, let's go back and do it again, and press apply. So this time when I go down to recovery, and I go back to AC failure, it's ticked. So this tells me that if I have an AC failure event, it will actually send an, uh, an event email indicating that AC failed from the utility to that email address. So there you have it. It's pretty simple. Um, and you can go and look at your history. So we can go off that, look at external events. 
Um, we can say, well, I powered up initially, so I had one communication establishment event, and you can see it there. If I do something interesting like, I go back to here, and I actually disconnect from the wall socket, the power going, feeding to the UPS, you'll see the graphic pick it up in a second, and there it is. So, so now, instead of seeing the power coming flow through this direction, you're seeing the power flow from the battery directly through the inverter and then out as a simulated sine wave. Thank you, Dave. So now, if I reconnect the power to the input to this power shield defender UPS, thus, in a minute, you'll see it record it coming back in, and there you have it. So now you see power is reconnected at the wall socket input to the UPS, the PowerShield Defender UPS, and you see power has been restored in the correct path as indicated. Now, to, to go and prove that that's what we actually did, you can go and look at the history, go to events over here, and how, oh, that'll probably be an input event, no, sorry, oh, sorry, you have to re-log it, I'm sorry, and then we go to History and event statistics and look at external event and there you have it. You see communications was established as one event, um, input event. Yeah, there you go. You had AC failure and you had an AC recovery and that was just an indication of what I just demonstrated to you. But for that to, to be displayed after you've actually performed your little experiment, you must always refresh on this icon, this is the refresh icon. You see it there, it's a refresh icon for it to actually to log it. So there you have it. Very simple little intro on what you can do with the um, NetGuard software. There's a lot of other things you can do, but that's basically um, just a simple intro. Thank you very much for watching this video.